Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. It's Skylar W0SKY here. And today we got the Kraken SDRs. The Kraken is a phased coherent five channel software defined radio built out of five RTL SDRs. I've got the Kraken unit and the antenna set here, which goes on your vehicle. These are useful for direction finding, uh, could be used for passive radar, and also just if you need five receivers in general, if you need five SDRs uh, stacked together. So this will be just a quick unboxing and tutorial on getting started. What you need for steps on setting up the Kraken SDR for a mobile direction finding test. So first is the main box. Here's the actual SDR unit box. German company, so it comes with your instruction manual in English and German. And we've got the, the SDR unit. It's a pretty simple unit. It's just got a fan, your five RF channels, power indicator light, and two USBs. So you've got your power and data USB connections. And here's the antenna set. This is designed for mobile direction finding. So when I open it up, it's got five mag mount antennas, one for each channel. And then we've got five SMA to SMA cables labeled for each channel to use. Highly recommended you get the antenna set if you're gonna get one of these SDRs because can't really do much without the antennas. Everything is unboxed now, and got a few additional items that, that you're gonna need to run the Kraken SDR. You've got the five antennas here. We've got the SDR unit also. Now you're gonna need something to power the Kraken, so I've got a USB-C power supply. Now you will also need a Raspberry Pi. So this actually runs the, the software to do the RDF and all the direction finding. So you need a Raspberry Pi 4, and then a micro SD card to put the Kraken software on it, and a power supply for the Pi. You will also need an Android phone. This phone will be used for the mapping. And then this is way overkill, but I've got a 12 volt to 120 volt inverter with an extension cord just to power both the phone, SDR, and the Raspberry Pi. But you could just get away with a USB cigarette lighter. I'm just using what I had on hand. This is all you need to get started. So first what we gotta do is flash this SD card. So you need at least eight gigabytes. 32 is what I've got right here. So we gotta flash this SD card with the Kraken software so we can put it on this Pi. You also need a USB-C to USB-A cable. It has to be a USB-3 cable. You can tell with the little pins on the very end, there's five pins there to connect the Pi to the Kraken. To begin, I got a micro SD card reader for the computer and then went to the Kraken GitHub for a download link to the Raspberry Pi image. I used Belina Etcher to burn this image to a micro SD card. For best performance, it's recommended to overclock your Raspberry Pi. With the SD card plugged in, I added the config.txt file in the boot partition for the following values. Look up overclocking Raspberry Pi for more info. Now I printed out the paper antenna guides. This helps with the critical placement of the mag mounts. I downloaded the paper version from GitHub, but there's also a 3D printed version. I then cut out the shapes and taped them together as shown here. Each circle is spaced 5 centimeters apart starting at 10 centimeters. For different frequencies you will want a different radius. Find the calculator spreadsheet on the GitHub for the minimum and maximum radius for each frequency. The channel configuration is critical for getting the correct bearing. When looking at the top of the vehicle, channel 0 is on front, and the subsequent channels are increment clockwise. It's now time to install the unit on the vehicle roof. After you've found the radius, based on the frequency you want to use, carefully place each antenna on the correct circle using the stencil with all the SMA connectors facing the same direction towards the window you want to route the coax. I then carefully pulled the paper off while trying to leave the antennas in the same position. Each cable is now screwed on to the SMA connectors on the antennas and then routed through the window. The cables were connected to the Kraken with each at the correct channel number based on where the antenna placement is. I plugged in the USB-C to USB-A cable between the Raspberry Pi and the Kraken data port. Then plugged in the USB-C power supply for both the Raspberry Pi and the Kraken. It's important to make sure the Kraken is powered up when the Raspberry Pi boots. Do not plug in the Pi before the powering on the Kraken. Now it is time to configure the Android phone, which will be connecting to the Kraken for mapping. There are two ways to connect, either through a Wi-Fi hotspot generated in the Kraken, or setting up a hotspot on your Android phone. Using a phone hotspot is ideal if you want to use the mapping feature because that will require internet connectivity. When booted, the Kraken searches for a Wi-Fi hotspot with the exact SSID Kraken Android and the same password. With these exact credentials, then wait for the status showing a client has connected to the phone. 
and that sh should be the Kraken. So I'm in the car here. I got the hotspot set up. The Pi is connected to it now, but just so I can find which IP it is, I've got my laptop here. And I'm gonna connect to the Wi-Fi access point, and then I'm gonna run the program Angry IP Scanner. Click Run, and we should be able to find which IP address that Pi is running at. And the Kraken SDR you can see is on 192.168.186.56 in my case. So now we can actually just navigate to that on our web browser. And here it is. Um, the frequency we're going to hunt today is at uh, 450.5 or some what about. So let's just put it there for now. Let me go back to Spectrum. Yeah, there we go. The frequency interest is now dead center. So we want to put the distance between the elements here, array spacing. And if you remember, we were doing 20 centimeters. I'm doing 12 and a half kilohertz bandwidth because this is a narrow channel, but you can select the bandwidth that you want right here. Then that should be good there. To control the Kraken with the Android phone, download the Kraken SDR Android app from the Google Play Store. The same SDR server web page you saw earlier on my laptop can be opened up from this app. With the SDR set up on our first test frequency, a known constant carry around 450 megahertz, it's time to take it for a test drive. The Kraken Android app can be opened simply by pointing it at kraken.local under the IP config. I now drove with the Kraken while turning direction finding on, which is the second button up from the bottom left, to see if we get a bearing on this signal. On this map, the red line is the current direction of travel, the individual blue lines are all the bearing samples, the cyan line is the current estimated bearing, and the black pattern shows the current signal strength at each angle. When this black pattern has multiple lobes, it's highly likely that there's a multipath environment with lots of signal reflections around. A green circle will be marked when the estimated signal position has been made. As you can see here, just with this short drive, the node signal near downtown Denver on a skyscraper just to the west of me has already been estimated, and I haven't even driven really close to the signal. In this demo with the same signal, I brought the laptop on with the DOA estimator. In an empty parking lot, I drove in a circle to demonstrate the angle of arrival on this signal changing as I turned the vehicle. Due to the high low elevation of the signal and low amount of clutter, the environment does not have much multipath and is getting a very accurate DOA as I spin it around. In this test, I'm driving in a straight line, but the DOA is moving all over the place and showing multiple lobes. This is due to multipath with buildings nearby. For this last demo, I tuned to the 600 MHz T-Mobile cellular band to see if we could locate cellular base stations. I used the GPS navigation feature to automatically route me to the signal, and I was able to have step-by-step -step directions to get me to two nearby cellular towers. So I used the navigation feature and I just tuned it to a random 600 megahertz cell spectrum. I know there's uh, T-Mobile down at 600 megahertz. Um, just wanted to see if, I could, if it would work on cellular spectrum. And lo and behold, the navigation system brought me right up to this cell tower right here. So uh, it's working pretty well. I'm actually kind of surprised it worked on the um, cell tower band as well as it did. So. Uh, that's pretty cool, especially because there's so many different cell towers sharing the spectrum. And this time it brought me to this little disguise tower as a clock tower, but there's really cell phone, you know, it'd be inside, uh, inside of that clock. So, uh, brought me right up to it, so I'm pretty impressed. We're basically right in the middle of this circle right here. And, uh, I had no problem finding this cell tower at 632 megahertz or so around that. So, uh, pretty cool.
And then just sitting next to the cell tower, here's our uh, spectrum plot. So obviously we have a really strong signal on it, kind of all in red. Our DOA estimation, so it should just be just to the left a little. And because these DOAs are backwards, 33 degrees, kind of makes sense, 36 degrees, since it's just a little to the left, which um, zero degrees would be straight ahead. So that would be zero, 30 something. Yeah, it makes, makes sense. This was a quick tutorial and demonstration of the Kraken SDR for direction finding. I hope you enjoyed the video, and at around the $500 price point, it's really hard to beat the price for capabilities that this unit brings compared to the professional units around 10 to 100 times that price.